Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for January 8th, 2016. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to be discussing hackers taking over the power grid. We're going to talk about a new exploit for MS-15-132, as well as some new vulnerabilities in Comcast's home security system you might want to check out. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Contact consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com today. And by Cyberry.it. Get the latest hacking and security training for free from www.cyberry.it. All right, let's jump right into mischievous apps. So uh, last week, uh, 13 apps were removed from the Google Play Store uh, due to their malicious nature. Um, these particular apps, uh, what they did is they performed some unauthorized downloads of other apps. They also attempted to uh, gain root access on the phones that they were downloaded to. Um, one of the apps, of these, of these 13 apps, was downloaded more than a million times. So how did it, how did it get downloaded so many times? Like, why, why is a malicious app being downloaded more than a million times? Well, first off, they were fully functioning games that were a lot of fun and people really liked them. So they got really high ratings. Um, and secondly, they got high ratings because all of these apps in this particular group of malware were upvoting all of the other apps. So as they would get downloaded, they would go ahead and go to the Google Play Store and upvote the other malicious apps. So these apps were getting getting up really high in the download or in the uh, in the ratings of, of Google Play Store, um, which enabled them to be downloaded so many times. Um, basically, what so the other thing that's that's really bad about this particular malware is that if it gained root access or if it detected that the device was already rooted and had the ability to perform access or perform functions as root. Um, it would install persistence that actually lasted through factory resets. So if you did happen to download one of these pieces of malware and it did get root on your phone, um, you're going to have to go back up all your data that you think is important and then reflash the ROM um, because the factory reset is not going to cut it. Next up is uh, Comcast home security vulnerabilities. Um, so it was reported by Rapid7 that there's a new vulnerability in Comcast Xfinity home security systems that allows for interfering with communication between the sensors. So what I'm talking about is the little sensors that go on your windows and doors. Um, they communicate back to a base station um, with, with Wi-Fi over the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Um, so Rapid7 basically demonstrated that they're able to come in and just jam that frequency and the base station doesn't care at all that a sensor has been disconnected at all. So essentially the base station um, is disconnected from from the sensors. Um, you go open the door. Uh, the sensor's disconnected. Doesn't report that the door is open at all. You know, walk in as an attacker freely. Do what you want. Get out and stop your jamming. And the sensor or the base station will never have known a difference at all. Um, so kind of an interesting attack there. Is Comcast going to fix it? Um, they say not likely. <clears throat> All right, attacking industrial control systems. And ICS and SCADA has been a pretty hot topic lately. Um, and here's another one to add to the mix. Basically, uh, last, right at the end of last month, right at the end of December, um, 80,000 customers went without power in the Ukraine. And it's been attributed to hackers um, because uh, some malware was found on the systems. Um, and a lot of research, uh, or a lot of researchers have been analyzing this particular malware. Specifically, EyeSight has been attributing um, this particular malware to the Sandworm group, which is a Russian, Russian hacker group. Um, what this malware did when it infected these industrial control systems, it installed two pieces of malware. It installed uh, Black Energy and also the Kill Disk malware. Black Energy kind of functions as the, the back door, so to speak, uh, that allowed the attackers to perform actions such as looking for other systems to infect, um, you know, run commands on those systems. Um, the Kill Disk malware was really interesting because it literally killed the disk. Um, it had functionality built in to, uh, to perform actions against the hard drive itself that would make it completely unrecoverable. Um, how did these systems get infected? So right now, uh, ESET is saying that it looks like it's probably a phishing attack with a weaponized Word document that contained macros. Very common attack. We're seeing it more and more. Um, so, you know, this is yet another attack um, against ICS and SCADA. Uh, it's it's time to focus our, our energy more on on the security protections for industrial control systems and SCADA. Um, this if it's if it's true that this was attributed to hackers, this will be the first known um, case where electricity has been completely cut or 
uh, you know, an attack against an actual power grid has uh, been successful by hackers. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very likely that we're going to see more and more of these attacks. We're going to see more against our own country, U.S. Um, and uh, we need to keep upping our ICS and SCADA protections. Um, MS15132. So this, this is a, a patch that Microsoft released last month for a number of DLL uh, hijacking vulnerabilities. Um, since the patch has been released, we've, we've seen a few researchers come out and uh, try to attack this particular uh, vulnerability. It was reported, that, or this, this particular vulnerability was reported to affect a number of uh, Microsoft Office versions and also different Microsoft Office, or Microsoft uh, Windows versions. Um, the, the actual vulnerability um, being a DLL hijacking vulnerability typically uh, would require that the, the document or the, the piece of software that's being loaded have that DLL in the same working directory. Now, a lot, now commonly, the way this attack is performed is you would set up some sort of like SMB share um, and have a user open that file from that share, and you would also be able to host that DLL within that, that, that share. Um, that way, the current working directory is the same as the one the DLL is being, being opened in. Um, so NCC Group took this a step further, and they found a way to cause this to, to, um, to launch uh, via a remote exploit. Uh, which means that they were able to literally cause a browser to download um, both of the files and also include them in the same working directory. Now, this is how it's how it done. Um, essentially, for various versions of, of uh, browsers, uh, there's ways to, to get the browser to download both of these files into the same directory and also open um, within the same directory. Uh, so for Firefox, for example, um, they were able to show that, uh, you know, how if you were to download a document with Firefox, you're going to get either a save as or open with prompt. Now, if you were to click the open with button, immediately the DLL that's been embedded into the Word document, as well as the Word document, is going to be uh, downloaded to your temp directory, your working temp directory. Now, whenever you go to open with Word, uh, it's going to launch with Word with the context of the temp working directory. Now, now that your, your malicious DLL has also been downloaded to the temp directory, it's gonna, the exploit's gonna function correctly. Um, with Google Chrome and Edge, it's a little bit uh, more difficult to exploit as the, both of those operating systems don't prompt for download or prompt for save as or open with. They, they immediately will download to your downloads folder upon downloading a file via the internet. Um, so you, you have to figure out how to get the DLL into the downloads folder as well so that when they open the document, it's going to launch the DLL as well. Now, the way that NCC Group detailed how they could get this to occur is via an iframe attack and an automatic download. So NCC Group has a, a nice little uh, proof of concept script on their site that shows how an attacker could... Um, could embed the DLL as well as Word document into a single download that will download automatically both files to the downloads folder so that whenever you open the Word document, it launches that DLL as well. Um, so this, I mean, what do you do? This particular vulnerability has been patched. It's MS15132. There's going to be more OLE and DLL hijacking vulnerabilities to come with this, more than likely. Um, but for, for organizations that want to protect themselves, just apply the patch. For pen testers, this looks like it's going to be an awesome uh, new vulnerability to start exploiting uh, for phishing attacks because we know everyone patches so well. All right, so um, one of our own Black Hills Information Security employees, Brian Furman, is going to be uh, teaching at Black Hat Asia this year. Um, he's going to be teaching a course called Advanced Testing, ev Evaluating and Breaking of Security Software. It's from March 29th to 30th, and I highly recommend everyone go sign up for this now because it's going to be an awesome course. Um, that's it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. Uh, if you want to check out more, check out hacknaked.tv. Check out the show notes at wiki.securityweekly.com. Um, I'm going to be speaking at SANS 2016, uh, one of the SANS at Night talks on March 15th at 8.15 on C2 and Pivoting. So if you're there, come check it out. Um, we got B-Sides Orlando coming up soon, uh, March 12th through 13th, and uh, CFP is currently open for it. Go If you want to talk, go submit your CFP. Uh, they're also looking for uh, sponsors currently, so if you're interested in sponsoring B-Sides, this is a great B-Sides to sponsor. B-Sides Orlando is huge, um, and we all, we all have a lot of fun there. So uh, if you want to email us, um, we're at the show at hacknaked.tv, and I'm on Twitter at daftac. 
Thanks and have a great weekend.